Are you a virtual assistant who's ready to build that incredible website that's going to attract your ideal client? If so, you're in the right place. Your virtual assistant website should be a unique reflection of you. And whether your brand is more fun or more professional, your website should really show that through and through. So today we're gonna to be talking about when do you actually need a website? We're gonna be talking about what elements a website should include for virtual assistants. And I'm going to be sharing with you some of my top tools for starting your own virtual assistant website. Let's jump right into it. If you haven't met me, my name is Abby Ashley. I am the founder of The Virtual Savvy and here at The Virtual Savvy, we love virtual assistants. It's kind of what we're obsessed about over here. And so if you are looking to become a virtual assistant, if you're already a virtual assistant and you're wanting to know how to price, package your services, raise your rate, get more clients, you're definitely in the right space, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to my channel and then hit the bell because that's going to notify you every time I release a new video on this channel. All right, one of the things I want to jump in first to is when is the right time to actually have a website? Should you have a website before you start getting clients? Now, people may disagree with me and that's okay. My personal opinion is that you do not absolutely have to have a website before you get started offering your services. In fact, over 5,000 students have gone through our program and many of them have fully booked out their services without ever having a website. Now, why is that? When it comes to building a virtual assistant website, you have to realize that in the very beginning days, you're not gonna be showing up on the top search forums, right? It's not an instantaneous thing that people are just going to stumble upon your website because they entered certain keywords into Google. In the very beginning days, your website should be a business card, right? When you meet somebody at an event or whenever you are networking online, you give them their website and then they go to that website in order to find out more information about you. Awesome, that's what your website should be, especially when you're first starting out. However, do you absolutely have to have that in the beginning? My opinion is no, and here's why. One of our core values here at The Virtual Savvy is action over perfection, right? And that means that we want you to get going, get clients as soon as possible, and anything that's gonna put kind of the brakes on that process, we actually say maybe not do it yet. So should you have a website? Yes. But do you absolutely need it in the beginning? I don't believe you do. In fact, inside of our course, the Savvy System, we teach you that you actually need a process to build relationships first. That all the things that you could put in a website, an about me section, a biography, your services, the next steps, all of the things could be put in a PDF portfolio. So you could literally have a coming soon page on your website if you wanna go ahead and snag that domain name, but it could just lead for now and the conversations can be, hey, here's my portfolio that says all of my services in it. It's a much simpler thing to put together. Now, of course, if you already know how to build websites, if you know, hey, this isn't gonna be a stumbling block for me, I'm going to be able to build a website in a day or in a few days, by all means, go ahead and build a website if that's something that's easy for you to do. But if that's not a skill set that you have and you don't have the extra couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars laying around to pay somebody else to do it, then my recommendation is to go ahead and at least get your very first First client just with some of the tactics that we teach in some of our other videos, right? In some of these other videos, we teach you how to market. We teach you how to sell your skills, how to go out and get clients. And you can use those methods even before you have a website. So once you have those paying clients, then you can use some of those funds to go towards either creating your own website, have a little bit more time because money's actually coming into your business, or you could go ahead and use some of those funds to pay for somebody else to create a website for you. All right. So once you are ready to build a website, what should your website actually include? This is a great question. And I think what we're going to do is actually go inside the computer because I want to share with you some of the things that are really helpful for having an awesome website. All right. When it comes to some of those must have factors for creating your own website, one of the things that I recommend is having these four key pages, a home page, an about me page, a services page, and then a next steps page, right? And so you can see one of our students, Sadie, has all of these in such an awesome way on her website. So 
Her homepage is really descriptive. She has a fun freebie that you can download. That's a way to build an email list. Not something you have to do at the very beginning. Kind of a how we work, her three phase system. And again, some client love testimonials. I love the idea of putting testimonials on every single page if you have them, just because it's a really, really great way to show off that you know what you're doing, right? And so this is a really, really great homepage. Next is an about me page. So in an about me page, you just need to be able to tell about you, about your business. This is a place where clients are going to connect with you, right? So it's okay to say fun things like, hey, my favorite Starbucks order is a vanilla chai latte. That's awesome. This is a way that people are gonna connect with you as a person. Remember, businesses connect with people. It's not business to business, it's person to person. And so we have a little bit of Sadie's story here, an awesome, awesome about me page. And she even shows off her team as well, which is really cool. So the next thing that you're going to want is a services page. Hers is called work with us. And that her work with us page literally outlines the services. And so you have a couple of different options here. So what Sadie decided to do, which I love, is she has, you know, her different services. We have a VIP day. She has a systems VIP month. And then she has a three month systems setup. OK, and you don't always have to list your prices on the site, but I do recommend at least having a starting at price. Right. So just like Sadie, she's not saying, hey, a VIP day is always going to be twenty five hundred dollars, but the prices are starting at that range. So that way, if somebody can only afford a thousand dollars, they know, OK, this isn't for me. And your website should qualify people as well as disqualify people from working with you. If the person is not the right fit, if they can't afford your services, it should actually weed them out, right? And I love how she has a schedule your discovery call. Every time you can put that call to action, again, all over your page, I love it. Always be leading them to the next step. And that does bring me to the very final step, which is an actual, what are the next steps? For most of you, it is gonna be a discovery call. And so what Sadie does is actually leads you to her uh, form where you can fill out a little information about your business and book a discovery call with her, which I think is beautiful. Let's take a look at one of our other students' websites. This is Narissa. Again, a beautiful homepage. You can go through, it's really nicely laid out. A how we work section, which again, getting people to understand just by coming to your website, what it's gonna look like to work with you is a really great thing to put on your homepage. This is something that both Sadie and Narissa did, which I think is really great. And so under Narissa says, hey, our team is going to do a 30 minute discovery call. We will assign you an admin specialist. Our team will assess and set up all the systems. You sit back and let us handle those tasks you haven't been able to keep up with. You know what to expect whenever you book a call with Narissa's team, right? And again, that call to action right there. So does she have the homepage? Yes. Does she have a services page? Yes, she does. Again, these are her services. She does email management, calendar management, outbound calls, customer service support, et cetera. She chose not to put pricing on her page, which is totally fine. Again, some people want to wait until the discovery call to release that information, which is up to you. And then again, an about me page. I love that she talks a little bit about her agency, but also about herself too, right? A little bit of her background and why she is a qualified person to work for you and in your business. And then again, that book a call. Now there are other pages as well. I'm talking about the four main pages. So your homepage, your services page, an about page, and then a call to action, a book a call. What do I actually need to do? There always needs to be a next step. And again, she has an awesome form to fill up to be able to book that call with her. All right, let's look at one more. This is Vanessa, another one of our lovely students. And Vanessa's website is such an awesome reflection of her. She talks about, you know, hey, if you have big vision for your practice, she um, is niche down specifically to therapists. So kind of hitting on some of those pain points right there in her homepage, which I think is really awesome. And so her homepage is just kind of that overview. And then you can see, hey, there's a call to action right there on the homepage. I absolutely love it. So she's got her homepage. She has an about page, right? I love having a picture of you, having a picture of your family, 
go ahead and saying some things that are important to you, why you do what you do, why you love your business. These are all awesome things that can be put on a about me page. And then next she has her services, right? So hers are broken up here. I can go ahead and just click on services and it's going to really show me the ways that I could work with her. So I could do simple practice setup. I can do a get it done session or practice management. And again, pricing right here. Okay. $200 a session starting at $1,800 a month. You can either put the exact price. If you do hourly prices, you can say my price is $30 an hour. If you do package based pricing, you can say the price of the package, or you can literally say prices starting at you know, $1,800 a month. So awesome, awesome services page. And then lastly, let's connect. Let's actually discuss what it would look like. And she has a form where you can book a discovery call right there on the site. You want to make it so easy for people visiting your website to take the very next step. All right, let's make this interactive. I want to know in the comments below, do you plan on putting your prices on your website? Everybody views this differently. So I'm curious what your opinion is. Let me know in the comments. All right, so you know when is the best time to launch your own virtual assistant website. My personal recommendation is actually after you get your very first client. You do not have to have a website to even book your first client or even sell out your services. We've seen it done time and time again. However, when you are ready, we've talked about the best things that should go on your website, that you need that homepage, you need that about me, that services or work with me page, and then the next steps, how do they actually book a call with you? Those should all be very, very simply put on your website once you are ready. And then where should you be building your website? Well, the top two recommendations that I have personally would either be WordPress or Squarespace. Both of them are awesome options and there's benefits to both. If you're looking at WordPress, there's a lot more flexibility. I mean, literally you can do anything in WordPress. The downfall is that you can do anything in WordPress. So it can tend to be a little bit more technical and a little bit more difficult. However, However, there are a lot of site builders out there that will help with this process. For instance, something like Beaver Builder. So Beaver Builder is a really great kind of drag and drop system where you can, you know, go ahead and build a website a little bit more simply. You don't have to know code, things like that. We do actually have a Beaver Builder course in our Savvy Vault. You can check that out over at SavvyVault.com. It's one of over 70 tech and industry training courses that we do have for VAs, but that's one option. The other one to look into would be Squarespace. I think Squarespace is super, super user friendly. I've built websites myself and I would even say that I'm the most technical person. And so my VA skills were always more creative and administrative, not as much technical, but I was even able to build a website over on Squarespace. Again, really easy. And of course we do have a Squarespace course inside of our Savvy Vault as well. So there you have it. I hope that you are now equipped with the tools and the information that you need to build your own virtual assistant website if it's the right time for you. What other questions do you have about virtual assistants? We are always creating new content here at The Virtual Savvy. I'd love to know in the comments below what questions you have for myself, for my team. I would love to answer those questions in one of my next videos. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I have for you today. I hope that you have an awesome rest of the day and I'll see you in my next video.